Hey everyone, welcome back to FPL Fram. Today's video is going to be my Game Week 32 transfer plans. And it's of course a week that is interesting because we are two weeks out from Game Week 34. And this is a week where Everton's defensive fixtures finally start to get really good. And I think this is a great landing spot for people to potentially jump on an Everton defender. But the opportunity also presents itself next week as well, simply because a lot of us do have good defenses for Game Week 32. One of the things about Game Week 32 is that ultimately you're looking at players to invest into Game Week 34, or if you, let's say, have a free hit 34 um, in your pocket, it's probably a week where you can actually consider rolling because whatever transfers you made this week, particularly towards a player like Salah and, you know, changing your team structure about through minus fours, minus eights and things like that would probably be totally fine for this week or you would have wild carded. So I think Game Week 32 obviously is a week where a lot of people will make some quiet moves, but you don't need to be too aggressive. For example, a team like Liverpool don't have a great fixture on paper. It's still United away, which is pretty tough. When you look at, for example, a team like Arsenal, it's also Brighton away, which is also pretty tough. So interesting, of course, for those people who are trying to make transfers towards, you know, these Liverpool and Arsenal assets, this is almost the opposite week of Game Week 31, where they don't have exactly a great fixture. On the other hand, however, you know, Newcastle continue to have pretty good fixtures in the medium term and City as well. They're starting to have really good fixtures. So the investment pattern is probably more towards, you know, your City assets um, if you haven't got them already, or reinvesting back into, of course, more Newcastle, more City, as I mentioned, regardless of whether you're in a direction of, let's say, free hitting on 34 or not. Alternatively, you know, you have Everton as, as an option too. So this week, what I wanted to do was quickly recap Game Week 31. Obviously, as you can see on the screen, you, you can see that I've taken a minus eight. Um, I did take a minus eight because I thought there was still a bit of doubts in terms of Gusto's fitness. I wasn't really sure whether he'd actually feature. And I also just like the opportunity to go for Guardiola because of the news that Watkins was not going to be available for this uh, Man City fixture. So I kind of like the opportunity there. I was also expecting, and I don't know, of course, at the time of this recording, whether Chelsea would have conceded versus um, United, but I thought it was pr pretty probable. Ike Nuri, of course, was another option that I considered. So was Bradley. So was Virgil van Dijk. Virgil. Um, obviously he's a great long-term pick, but he also closes off some options in the midfield for me in the future, which is something I didn't like too much. As far as someone like Ait Nuri, I probably didn't actually believe that Wolves were going to get a clean sheet. They didn't, uh, but Ait Nuri continues to be in fantastic attacking positions, not only just in open play, but I mean, you could see him score from a set piece, which is magical. So congrats to people who actually went for Ait Nuri. And once again, it kind of caters back to that wildcard 26 and going for Pedro Neto instead of Ait Nuri. That's still biting me a little bit, but it is what it is. That's just part of the nature of FPL. Sometimes you make two decisions and it suddenly leaves you, you know, in a vastly different path. And that's totally fine. Um, of course, we still have, you know, the, the city players to play in terms of Guardiola. Holland is somehow a small, small differential. But really, most of my differentials have played. It was Muniz, to be honest, who is the differential and Neto. Muniz, not so good. But Muniz in the future looks like a really good pick because I think a lot of people are still a little bit uncertain about his minutes. But it seems like, I mean, even in a match like this where you see Fulham make so many substitutions in a match where they didn't play well at all, seeing Muniz actually play out 95 minutes is really encouraging. And I think the only concern was about the ankle issue that his manager mentioned. So Marco Silva did mention about how he had dealt with the ankle issue in the inter international break. And of course, proceeding to uh, the international break, we saw him, of course, you know, kind of get subbed off within the Fulham fixture. So really nice to see that Muniz is still perfectly fine. And actually, we're looking towards a Newcastle at home fixture where Newcastle somehow continue to lose defenders week on week. So that's really nice looking ahead. Now, for the rest of this week, I'm just looking forward to a lot of the picks that I have that everyone else owns um, doing well or not doing so well. And hopefully, of course, Guardiola can, can, can get a clean sheet. And this would probably make me feel a little bit better about the week, especially in a week where I was basically resetting my team with exception to Pedro Neto uh, and Paul Torres. And what I wanted to talk about with today's video is, of course, my transfer plans going forwards, but not just for Gaming 32, because I still see it as a week to roll. So when I quickly just look at picking my team for next week, I mean, I, I've sort of lined it up as I think, you know, it should be done. Probably maybe Pal Torres could be put in front of Saliba potentially, but it's still going to be a team that looks like this, right? Neto versus Luton away. Gusto versus Sheffield United away. Guardiola versus Crystal Palace away. Crystal Palace just still look like, you know, historically as they have been, basically a very, very poor offensive team. So when I think about even the lineup here, Guardiola's an, an excellent transfer. And hopefully, of course, he continues to play for City. I don't know what's going to happen in the Aston Villa game. Hopefully he doesn't get injured. Um, but that's that. Gabriel, just still a really good offensive threat. Maybe I play Pau ahead of him. That could be an interesting pick because, of course, you know, going for one Arsenal defender might feel nice. But then I, I also know that a lot of the field is actually going to be ultimately playing their Arsenal defenders, maybe two of them. 
in this case, I think that it's a good opportunity since I have good fixtures with some of my other players to maybe field some other players too. So maybe Paul Torres can go in front of Gabriel, but that's a decision that I have to make. Ultimately, Arsenal are still the best defense in the league, even though they're playing away to a pretty competent Brighton team. As far as the midfield, um, captaincy wise, I think it's 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 between let's say Son and Palmer, maybe even Holland versus Crystal Palace. I think preemptively, what I would say is that I still quite like Son captaincy, and I still like the Palmer vice captaincy. A lot of people, of course, have been re recently watching Palmer. I don't know what he's going to do versus United. He's probably going to do extremely well, which is what we expect from Palmer, to be quite honest. Uh, but I, I like my home and away differences. And I think here, given that the opportunity is that, you know, Salah, Palmer, and Holland are all away from home, even Saka, for example, I like the opportunity to go with Sun captaincy once again. His minutes still seem very secure. He's on pens. Now, the only thing I would mention is that maybe Spurs haven't looked so good as an offensive team. You know, players like Madison, you can see he's getting subbed off earlier. We would usually say he's the creative hub of the team. Richarlison, it doesn't seem like he's fit for whatever reason. Only played 5-10 minutes within the game versus West Ham. And so overall, of course, it seems like Tottenham is in a little bit of an attacking rut. So that's something to think about in terms of thinking about the vice captaincy and captaincy there. Even some people, I think, will just simply be comfortable with going Salah and Holland as well, right? Yes, of course. Um, when you look at, for example, Salah versus United, not exactly a great picture on paper, but I still think it is one of those fixtures where you're probably expecting for both teams to score. And no reason why Salah can't do well within a fixture like that, particularly considering that United have still been a very, very poor defense for the course of the season. So I can see a lot of people going for captaincies there. Holland probably still seems a little bit dull because if there's anything that we can give a little bit of credit to Crystal Palace for is the fact that they, they still are ultimately a very good um, defensive team. With Muniz, as I said, it's a really good opportunity to actually have a really good fixture with Newcastle um, at home, so I really like it. And then Solanke, once again, we've seen Luton plenty of times this season. We'll obviously welcome the fixture with open arms. So that's going to be my team selection for, for next week, and I'm expecting to roll. So quickly going towards the sort of team planner here up until game week 34, I thought that would be a good game week to sort of cut off the team planning because, of course, we like planning towards the long term. And I think the long term strategy, of course, is to bench boost on 37. We have invested a little bit into that by recently going into players like Gusto and Guardiol. We have good short term fixtures, but we'll also double on game week 37. So that's sort of the, the rough general plan that we've sort of aimed for here. Now, of course, I'm lacking in Newcastle players. I'm lacking in potentially also an Everton player who's actually really strong in terms of um, the strategy aspect of having a great fixture that's a single fixture in Game Week 37, which is Sheffield United at home, and then also just having a great fixture in Game Week 34 as a doubler there um, with two home fixtures. So that's sort of an option for me right now. In Game Week 32, as I mentioned, though, I will be rolling. So the whole point here is just to, you know, once again, See what, what happens with injuries, have a good team, potentially punt against the Arsenal defense. I don't really mind right now benching players like Gabriel, benching players like Saliba, because I'm pretty confident in Guardiola's minutes versus Crystal Palace. I'm also pretty confident that Gusto should be able to play for Sheffield United. Now, if that's not going to happen, of course, we just play Gabriel instead of Gusto, uh, and we call it a day there. I think we'd still be happy, of course, that Guardiola's probably an upgrade over a Saliba given that the context, of course, is that Arsenal are going to be facing a Brighton team who ultimately still are one of the leading offenses within the Premier League. So um, not really concerned about the team shape right there. I think I'm pretty healthy. The attack looks good too, in the sense that, of course, uh, Muniz, who's probably my cheapest player, actually has a really good fixture here and his best fixture um, for a while, really, which is going to be that Newcastle at home fixture. Then moving towards Game Week 33 now, we have... Optimize the team once again. This is Sun versus Newcastle. Now that we're looking at Newcastle, you know, with the renewed sort of light, they are a really bad defensive team. They also have really bad injuries. And, and ultimately, when you're going Paul Dume deep um, into the team, you know it's 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 in a tough spot. Um, the team is probably at its absolute peak here in the sense that I can easily play, you know, Muniz, who can come off the bench. Uh, Guardiola's within the team as well. I've got Luis Diaz within the team and gave me 33. Here's an interesting opportunity where I think I can easily just play Guardiola over Gusto, if I'm being honest, and then just play Gusto ahead of Pau Torres and keep Pau Torres within the team too. One thing that sort of cropped up in my mind is that I could technically go for maybe someone like an Ait Nuri this week as opposed to going for, let's say, an Everton defender on Game Week 34. Because the, the way that it would work, though, is that I could actually bench boost on Game Week 33, right? So if, let's say, I go for Fleck in here, who's a great keeper, Neto at least is at home versus United. Muniz actually has a decent fixture in the sense that he's against West Ham. Gusto has a home fixture, which is nice. We know that this Everton team have been a little bit toothless as, as of late um, as an offensive team. Um, Arsenal, once again, just a good team with a good fixture here. 
uh, and Pal Torres, of course, can be shifted on to potentially someone like um, an Aitluri here, who actually has a Nottingham Forest away fixture. So that could be something that I could be moving towards um, as well. And I have the two free transfers available to do so. If let's say there's a miraculous situation too, where let's say Bradley, for whatever reason, is still able to play for uh, Liverpool, um, and Trent seems to have, let's say, a delayed sort of return back into action, I could go Bradley too. But I think Aitluri is a nice suggestive option that I can go for here. Just to show what a really sort of weak-ish bench boost, but something that could still be quite good, um, would look like as well. If I don't go up for Aitnuri, I think I would just keep Pau Torres, of course, as you can see within this situation. This would leave me with two free transfers uh, to play with in Gaming 34. So if we move over to Gaming 34, of course, my plan here is to just go for Mikolenko on top of Luis Diaz. And this would still leave me with two free transfers on Gaming 35, which would allow me to sort of plan ahead. You know, whatever the situation is in terms of, let's say, Gordon, for example, um, and other such players, I, I, I can definitely think about going for players like that. If I really wanted to, I think I could sell Sun um, for a short-term transfer towards someone like Eze. This would allow me to bench Muniz as well. But I think, you know, I don't think Eze is that good of a pick in terms of, you know, he's competing with the likes of Saka with the double gaming fixture as well. I think that's maybe a little bit overstated. I think keeping Sun is actually quite valuable. So that's sort of where my mind is at right now. I think Luis Diaz is a very strong pick, potentially also a little bit underrated in terms of his minutes. So I think he's actually a really good pick going forwards. Um, but as I said, you know, of course, if I do really want to go out of Sun, I could go into Eze. But that would also make me a little bit weaker for Gaming 37, which is something that I'm not keen on doing. Right now, of course, I've got eight doublers effectively. I'm going to count Haaland as a doubler here. But the reality, of course, is that, um, you know, I've got eight players who actually have double gaming fixtures and then the three single gaming players in terms of Holly, Muniz and Palmer. Um, so just being fair, of course, the, what the team is on paper. Looking at, of course, these sort of expected points totals, it's very hard to see myself getting towards any player with exception to Eze um, because I don't really want to lose Sun, um, but I don't think I'm actually going to drop Sun as I mentioned. So I don't really like, for example, moving into Joss as a transfer because I'm not guaranteed about his minutes. In the midfield position, of course, you know, I can't have room for an Arsenal player. So it's really between like players like Sarabia and Eze, and Sarabia still has a fixture versus Arsenal, which I'm not that fond of. So really, it's just Eze, who's actually just a competing option. This is a week where I think I'm going to have a worse week than everyone in the field, and that's fine, right? We, we ultimately go each game week with sometimes a weaker team than most, and I'm comfortable doing so in this week here. I still think Muniz is underrated as a pick because we've seen him sort of emerge as a really good pick. Um, he's at home versus Liverpool, and I like the idea of here not going to hedge, for example, not having a Liverpool defender, and instead I have a Fulham offense, um, you know, being backed here with Muniz, and, and I can still go for and, and hope for good results with my Liverpool players here versus Fulham, um, you know, hoping that it's basically a type of both teams to score game. And then in game week 35, um, I, of course, have a very strong team. You know, once I optimize for the team, of course, too, I'll have Sun back in the team. So it's a strong team here with two free transfers where I can easily go into, you know, your Gordons, your Isaks of the world and, and sort of consider how I move out of Luis Diaz or just simply keep Luis Diaz once again and make some soft transfers in the meantime. As you can see here, of course, the defense is a little bit weak, but it's not a bad team whatsoever. You know, ultimately, if let's say we have uh, the opportunity to go for another city defender, I think that's perfectly fine to do. I'd probably be playing Guardiola over Saliba anyways. Um, unfortunately, of course, the, the hub algorithm hasn't probably adapted to um, Ake's injury quite yet. So that's sort of the rough landscape right now in terms of the transfers that I could make. Uh, Gaming 35, of course, is, is uh, and, and between Gaming 35, 36, and 37, I've got four free transfers to really accommodate for the fact that I have to bench boost on 37. Um, and on top of that, too, I think I, I have the option to go for multiple players, right? So what, what I'll do instead here in Gaming 35 is just talk about all the players that we can really consider for the short term. So as you can see, Jackson props up as a great option. He's going to be a great pick just because of the amount of fixtures that Chelsea have. Um, that would allow me to triple up on Chelsea. I could also go towards Vicario as an option because as you can see, this isn't exactly a good week or a good fixture for, for example, a Flecken or a Neto. I can easily move out a Neto here. Um, assuming that they don't have good fixtures in the short term and then actually just go towards someone like Vicario. Um, one thing that we've also recently seen with Paro and Udogi is that the Spurs defense is really bad, right? But I think one thing that we like to see that's quite redeeming about bad defenses is that a goalkeeper can still do quite well. Vicario can be a shot stopper and I think that's quite nice as opposed to going for Paro and Udogi, spending extra money for those players and then knowing that basically I'm not going to get the clean sheets back. Um, as I said, Jackson's a great pick, Isak's a great pick, Gordon's a great pick as well. These are the sort of players that I'll probably be going for um, in around that time 
uh, in terms of FPL. So we also have to keep an open mind to whether we want to get Foden back in the team. And I think one of the issues with Foden too is that you can see, for example, um, as City now need to manage their fixtures and the amount of competitions that they're still involved in, we'll probably see Foden get a little bit more bench, even though we we see him basically as maybe City's most important player or second most important player right now. So something to think about in terms of how we're planning ahead. I don't really want to jump the gun in terms of my Game Week 35 plan, uh, plans right now, because of course Game Week 34 is probably the most crucial week. And as I said, I'm probably going to field out a little bit of a weaker team in Game Week 34, just so that I can actually make sure that I can bench boost on 37. But if I plan to bench boost ahead of that, maybe I can actually make a little bit more aggressive moves and go for, for example, you know, your essays replacing your sons and then actually sort of recalibrating my team later on. Uh, but right now my team is as such. I think even if I was to go for another transfer here, potentially what I would do is just go for maybe a transfer away from Muniz, um, but I, I just don't see the option. I don't see really an alternative outside of maybe Semenyo, who's actually a good pick with the sort of money that I have in the bank. Obviously, if I don't go for Mikalenko and let's say I go for a slightly cheaper defender, there's the option to go for Mateta as well. But as I've mentioned previously, the reason why I didn't like Mateta for my team and my transfers is if we just go back to, for example, let's say SA's fixtures um, as soon as game week 33 uh, and, and even 32, for example, like City and Liverpool are really tough fixtures for Eze. And even though I think Eze is like really, really highly rated by the algorithm, I still don't think that he's going to do that well versus um, City and Liverpool. So for me, he's not a pick that I would absolutely consider at all uh, until really game week 34. So that's just something to think about in terms of you know where my head is at with transfers and Ultimately, it all stems from Gaming 32. I've made a lot of transfers that sort of um, allow me to bench boost on 37, and that's why we've invested into boosting where they all, and that's where we're leaving off the video as well this week. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Take care, and goodbye.